Hello, this is Geronimo Jack. I am back and I'm here today with Lance E. Pants and our very special guest, Crashy. Welcome to the PCC. Today is our group reveal stream, but first I want to thanks, uh, give thanks to everyone who tuned in this week and followed us that uh, that helped us reach affiliate. Um, so that's a good, you know, just starter, get everything off the, off the, off the bat. Um, to give an idea of what's going on today, we're going to recap what's going on, what happened last month to refresh in everyone's minds. Uh, we're going to give you an explainer video and just talk about the teams, who's in the groups, and I'll let uh, Lance take this one away from here. Perfect. Yeah, so we're going to start with a recap of what happened to us back in February at our last event. We did take the month of March off to do a little bit of rebranding, but we have returned in full effect. Um, as you will remember from our last event uh the hebrew hammer and team immune were able to conquer the entire event they took down the professors in a five game series all of the way in the grand finals that was a weird way of putting that all of the way at the end of the, <laughs> the event they won the event right okay so yeah team of team immune was our winner they were followed by uh the professors most of our quarter or other semi-finalists are actually out of the event right now we have a huge uh turnover in teams for us uh, Team TOS turned out to be true in the shadows for this. Press Tab is no longer around. Uh, Team Faded has faded into existence. Rat Christ Gaming is busy with Easter this weekend, so they won't be playing in this event with us. So we're going to have a lot of changes from the last event to this event. The only two teams that we are bringing over from our last one are also Professors and Team Immune, as we saw before. So we'll see if anybody can take a crack at the champ and see if anybody's going to be able to knock out either uh, Immune or Professors or if they're going to meet in the finals again this week. So Crashy, uh, thoughts on how you played in the last tournament. How did that go did, for you yeah. guys? What was your thought of that? Um, so last tournament was the return of like OP teams coming to Pred, mm -hmm. which we always had hoped that we would keep um, like professors and bad timing around for some good practice because, you know, when TOS was playing, we had like a pretty good time in scrims and then we started playing against them and it, there was so much that we learned really really quickly so um it was really really like a great opportunity for them to like rejoin the, the game and kind of like raise the skill ceiling of the entire competitive scene um and and at the time we really hadn't had uh, much opportunity to get in scrims with like immune or anything so uh you know going into that event was a lot a lot of fun and then seeing immune in the what was it like the group stages for like qualifying i remember mm -hmm. i did a watch party for that stream prior to the actual monthly finals and i i just kept thinking to myself i hadn't watched them a whole lot so i was really really ignorant to how good they were and the whole time watching them through like the group stages i was just like okay this team is the real deal like they're they're really really good they know exactly what they're doing and so you know going into like last month's event or month before last event i i knew professors <laughs> was probably at the top and then immune really just like continued to push that opinion for me so it was really really fun getting to actually watch them because i just really hadn't had much of a chance to like see how they played um so i wouldn't say that i was underrating them but i definitely i just didn't know right and so getting to watch them play especially like on ping of course obviously you can't ignore that fact uh super super impressive and um yeah looking forward to this month as well because we got a lot of a lot of great teams new teams forming like you said there was a pretty big turnover and um but a lot of still good, like really good players and immune and professors coming back. So I think one of the craziest things about immune is how good they are and they're still playing on ping. They're on like a hundred. I don't know what the EU ping exactly, but it's over a hundred if I, if I yeah. recall correctly, right? All right. As a West Coast guy here, you got to be able to play on that ping. If you've ever played with me, you've heard me complain about how much I hate playing on NA East. A lot of those guys in EU actually have a better ping than some of the West Coast people do. I believe really? I saw, I believe I saw that like empty and F are only playing like 40 to 60 or something. Which That's is pretty, crazy. If so, which is pretty good considering they're covering the entire pond. Uh, I'm a huge Team Immune fanboy. I watch all of them stream all of the time and stuff. I be talking to them pretty regularly, and I never really see them notice like massive latency issues. I know that I Roar twice has some. Clearcast has some pretty big latency issues. Is Clearcast is Russian, is he not? I believe Clearcast is Russian, but Clearcast is actually sitting out of this next event. Um, oh. I believe that he is preoccupied. But they got a pretty good replacement. They got uh, Pablo Wazowski stepping in for him. For they have event. Pablo. Yeah. So is Pablo in the sticks or Pablo Wazowski? Are those the same players? They're the I've same person. Seen one, they're the, yeah, I've they're seen the more same than person. one Pablo in the game mm -hmm. so far. Okay, I also okay. believe he was Colombian Dash in uh, the Paragon times. So a familiar name to some of the people that have been around the scene for seven or eight years and have lower back pain like me. <laughs> Um, shout out to Texas Ping. I can play on either server. Yeah, oh, it must be nice. Go, dude. Yeah, I love it. 
Uh, we also have, like we said, the, the professors are in, and they are old Paragon vets as well. Uh, we have Crazy Fool, we have Mr. Guru. I believe Soul Reaper was around as well, but he, or either that or he's a Smite professional, correct? Uh, Soul Reaper's coming from Smite. I'm not sure if he yeah. played there. But yeah, so those guys have been around the block, and we are going to see some actual familiar faces from the old days um, that you guys might recognize and might be excited about if you do. But we're going to kick right off and get right into the group explainer video made by our very own Tedium. Shout out to him. He stayed up all night and finished that video literally two hours ago. So he deserves a small shout out for that one. If he's awake and actually can see this. Clap for him later in uh, for procrastination. Procrastination. This is the Prime Championship Circuit group play-ins format and rules. We start with group play-ins. Our teams will be divided into four groups of four teams. These teams will then play in a round-robin tournament with the top two teams from each group moving on to the next round. Each match is a best of one, so teams, be prepared for anything. Tiebreakers will be determined by head-to-head -head records. Then, in the seeding round, the eight selected teams will play again to determine where they will slot into our bracket with the finalists from our last event, the Professors and Team Immune. The winning team from Group A will play the winner of Group D, and the winners of Group B and C will play each other. Afterwards, winners of those games will play to determine the third and fourth seeds, and the losers will play for fifth and sixth seed. Meanwhile, the second place teams from each group will play the corresponding second place team from their opposite group. Winners of these matches will play for the seventh and eighth seeds, and the losers will be eliminated from the competition. Now, on to the groups. Group A, Vanguard, Sporadic, Bronze Army, and 117. In Group B, Royalty, Baby Yoda, Remember Us, and No Communication. In Group C, Primetime, The Gargamels, Red Dojo, and Agora's Exiles. And in Group D, Fire and Ice, Fraud Company, Zechin's Flame, and Rogue. Welcome to the PCC, your new home for prime competitive predecessor. Once again, thank you to TDM for uh, pulling all out and making that video. So that is a quick explanation of how the groups have laid out and who's going to be playing in the tournament for the uh, group reveal well, for the group stages. We're going to pass it off to Lance and Crashy, and they're going to talk exactly about what's going on and who are on those teams. Yeah, perfect. So we're going to start by taking a look into Group A. Uh, as we saw, the teams were Vanguard, Sporadic, Bronze Army, and 117. So a couple of these teams are actually semi-unknown to me. I'm a pretty familiar with the Vanguard's uh, roster. One of our former casters is actually on that team now. <laughs> Excuse me. You can see a spicy tuna roll over there. I uh, holding it down in support for them. The other thing that we have that some people may be familiar with, a uh, decently popular streamer just row is Joyand um, Sporadic. He is going to be uh, their carry in there. He's also got Big Z and Adamental in there. I believe that Adamental was in the Hunt of Heroes tournament. Um, do you have any uh, insight on who may be on Bronze Army for us or any of these other teams, Crashy? Yeah, you? yeah, Bronze Army uh, definitely going to be the the team that has CM Stark in it. Uh, now, I'm, I'm familiar with a lot of these people in the community, so forgive me if I don't know everything about them, but we got CM Stark, Shaw, Sock Cap, and Me So Sneaky, and I, I don't think we have full confirmation on their solo laner just yet, um, but Stark gonna be playing that jungle role, and I think this is the first time we've seen Stark sign up for attorney in Pred, so looking forward to that. Obviously, he's made his commitment to run a, a tournament as well in the future, and so really awesome to see like his level of involvement, and then some of these other people from the community. Like I said, I see Shaw and Sock Cap around um, in the community all the time, so big shout outs to them for joining up and you know playing competitive and, and having a bit of fun in the scene. So yeah, Bronze Army, uh, CM Stark's team. If you've seen him stream, you've seen his goofy camera angle, and hopefully he can bring <laughs> fun to the competitive scene. I love it. I, was... I, I, I love it. It's so funny to me. Me too. I'm glad that you like it as well. One day I was watching him, and it was just like the opposite side of his room, and he was showing the back of his chair. Yeah. 
Yeah. And like, it's just like, oh, you can't see what he's doing at all. But like, for some reason, it was just like engaging for some reason. It, it's either that uh, or you get the full like close face up. Either way, he, that, he brings the fun time. The to close it. cam gives me claustrophobic, makes me claustrophobic straight up. <laughs> it actually uneases me completely. Um, but we also have, like we said, we have Cha, Sock Cap, and Miso Sneaky, some old heads from the old Paragon days. Uh, they're actually, I'm pretty sure they're all a, like a close group of friends. It's nice seeing Sneaky come back into the community and let's start participating in events and stream again. And same with Sock Cap as well. Sock Cap being a very, very strong Richter as being his favorite hero. So if you guys are looking for who to ban in your games, probably that one. You <laughs> might put him on the back, but otherwise I wouldn't leave it open. Just, I, just heads up. I also got to throw a wild card look out here. Um, I have no idea who this 117 team is. I've never heard of any of these players or seen them anywhere. I don't know if these guys are using aliases and they're going to come out and beat us <laughs> in pseudonyms or something, but I, what we have for our roster for them is generic rebel knight, steel, mace window, and tracks. And I've literally never ran into any of these people. I ran into them in a solo queue game last night. I and ran I bet into they three of them. Eat you down, didn't they? I came out on top. Ah, uh, so keep <laughs> your eyes, saying. keep your eyes open for 117. They may be able to pull some magic out. The only thing I can say about 117, and I, I, it's not about the players. Again, no offense to them. I just don't know who they are. The only thing I can think of is like maybe they're Halo fans, like Spartan they're 117. Definitely, like, it's definitely okay, it's not, like that's the only thing I can think about. Like, are you Halo fans? Like, they're I, definite huh. Halo fans. There's no way about it. Um, Scratchy with the connections. Yeah, but we talked about Vanguard quickly, right? We did talk about Vanguards. I believe okay. that that is a team that I, I, I just taken a quick look at this group. That's probably who I would expect to come out on top of it. I know that they are a very familiar team with them, with each other. They play a lot of times. They also have a coach that's committed to doing sessions and stuff with them. I've seen a lot of Vanguard <clears throat> sprints, uh, but I see him Stark did beat me down in solo queue a couple times yesterday. So it's hard not to cheer for him right now. <laughs> All right. Now going into, I believe group B we have royalty baby yoda remember us and no communication so i'll let you guys take that one away so this is the one that i have got my eyes on because i think that royalty may be the team that enters this tournament that has the best chance at taking down team immune if you are um familiar with this game and you're familiar with like the higher echelon of the players within it you're gonna know a lot of these names that are on team royalty we're gonna have north we're gonna have six everyone watches six stream all of the time that's the king of the jungle sorry to you crash it's the truth <laughs> though we got seismic we got darren we've got province um there are a whole lot of people from what i have seen in scrims and from what i have seen talking to these teams that truly believe that royalties may win the whole shebang a bang uh there are some decent competitors within their group though team baby yoda uh uh, remember us and no communication i think that baby yoda may be a team of latin american players based off of their name and the lack of information that i have from them i apologize to these individuals if i murder your guys's names in advance but it looks like we've got Ilya uh kirk Kirkian, um alcatraz vortex Al um alpha jim 0077 uh Le Grand, Le Grand Shakur. <laughs> Le Grand Shakur. So maybe these guys aren't uh, Latin American. I apologize. And then Fifth Five Mars here. So maybe Phil you're Five Mars team. in actually the chat right now. So Is you he butchered well, his hey, entire team. And he's shout out to you. Listening. And I'm very sorry that I butchered your entire team. Can you give us your region, pretty please? Um, yeah, I, I, I love the name. Big shout outs to the Mandalorian. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we also apologize. We I don't know if we have the copyrights and the availability to actually show your logo on screen. So for safety precautions, we did just give you a green PCC logo. So we apologize. Remember Us has got an, a fantastic logo. Speaking of that, with that wonderful looking horse on it. Um, a decent group of people here. Have you heard any of these people on um, Remember Us Freshie? Do you want to go over um, the roster? Yeah, surprisingly not. So for solo, we have Darnathian. Dar Dardanthian, sorry if I said that went wrong. K's play play versus Nick plays play vs Nick play versus Nick. Okay, I'm getting it. <laughs> Stake supremacy and Eki. So again, um, or Ek Eki Eki yeah Eki like the E in Pokemon. That's what they say. Okay. Um. So yeah, no, not super familiar with this team, but very very excited. I also do think that they they, they really do have like a cool logo. It kind of gives me like that is the best like, logo uh, we've seen so far. It that gives me like a collegiate well logo. Like 
basketball vibes or something but really really cool looking logo um so excited to see a lot of these like <laughs> what dark horse teams potentially like come out into the group uh of course like i want to call back to royalty royalty probably the team that i think currently at least just from watching scrims is doing the best in north america so really really strong team very very coordinated um they had kind of like had their team working together and put together during the last uh, event that y'all had hosted but mm -hmm. they weren't actually they didn't have their full team signed up for the event so they were they've just been kind of temp. yeah they were playing under slimes temp they were kind of like a like a hodgepodge roster at the time but they they've been really like working in the shadows basically the whole time so if you hadn't heard of royalty up until now um then yeah you definitely have something to watch out for um, but yeah gonna be a, a pretty tough group for remember svbo to no communication so we'll see how the other teams you know do within their group stage rounds and uh compete against royalty here i so do think no communication has got a good chance at so we got to remember that these are best of one series right so you mm -hmm. can come out with something cheesy you can come out with one really really good performance and just because you don't necessarily beat them in a best of three or a best of five doesn't mean you can't pull off that upset for one game and no communication has got some gamers on there they've got cold if you've played against cold in any solo yeah. queue or anything you know about that man easy ed's on that team uh, there's definitely some people within no communication that can uh, that are that are real gamers cold alone is just such a 1v9 factor in your solo queue games all you got to do is just facilitate him and he'll just run with the game having played against him a handful of times i'm just usually looking for a nice casual game and solo queue to wind down for the night i hit that tab screen i see his name and i just put my hands in my head like my head in my hands i'm just like i don't want this right now that's this the, is not nature, what i need <laughs> the, nature the nature of the carry role. yeah i was gonna say the nature of solo queue and the nature of the carry role so big shout outs to him for playing that carry uh position and we'll see how they uh they fare in the group stage i i got i got good hopes <laughs> for uh no communications actually and just real quick jack you know what's cooler than being cool ice cold ice cold that's right <laughs> <laughs> all right all right all right all right <laughs> so yeah we also have uh easy ed who's been a big part of the community for the past few years i believe he was big in fault he helped do the hunt of heroes tournament and he is one of the desk analysts or casters so i will be excited to see how well ed does because i've never actually seen him play just yet um but he seems like he knows what he's doing so that'll be nice for me to see uh going on to group c there is a familiar team they've changed their name that is going to be uh the northmen now running on running under the name primetime right yeah so primetime we didn't actually get to see any of the northmen's games in our last group play um however they have been very active within the community this is a, a team of former semi-pro smite players coming together uh pretty uh Good little group of dudes they've been playing together for a really long time which is very hard to under uh or it's very easy to underrate that sort of camaraderie and sort of, sort of like team cohesion uh a lot of people think that if you just come out here and throw the best five solo queue players you can put together that all of a sudden you're gonna have this super elite team of stompers but it's so much more to that when you get to the competitive level so definitely got to look into the experience that they have mm-hmm and then we're going to see Environment, Wumba, Sandwich, uh, Colon, Oxygen Thieves, and Fear Blood Wolf on their teams. Uh, I'm pretty sure a handful of people have seen Wumba in their games. He's a pretty solid player, well-rounded. His favorite hero is Howitzer. Uh, Howitzer being a very, very hot pick right now. Everyone's starting to realize how strong and how just overloaded that kid actually is. He's got multiple forms of CC, multiple forms of peel, and then he can just literally fly away and hover in the air for like three or four seconds all on his own before he actually needs to, needs to hit the ground. That buys a lot of time for his team to follow in too. Yeah, and I'm going to go ahead and, and say it. Big shout outs to Environment. I've jungled against him lots of times on solo queue, so definitely familiar with the name. Looking forward to seeing how that team plays together. I didn't actually know the history behind them their team, so that's actually really exciting. Um, and yeah, one ball as well. I, I've definitely run into at least a few of them just playing the game, so mm -hmm. really looking forward to seeing how they actually play as a team because I haven't had that opportunity, so that's really exciting. Their My, uh... sub also has probably one of the best gamer names I have seen in a while. He goes simply Sandwich. by Sandwich. Sandwich. And speaking of great names, the next team that we have, the Gargamels here, these guys have got <laughs> an accumulations of names. They have got uh, Astrid, Doofus, just the letter E, Oscar, Three times. <laughs> and, and Chicken. So it's going to be interesting to see from these guys. I believe that they are a European team. I haven't seen a whole lot of them. I'm not really keeping up with what's going on over there across the pond outside of what's really going on with Team Immune. Uh, so I don't really know what to expect out of these guys, to be honest with you. 
Yeah, it's always super exciting. Like, I, I say this from a point of ignorance because I don't want to disrespect teams. It's super exciting for me to not know anything about a team and then see what they can do. Um, because, you know, I just don't have a lot of opportunities to pay attention to the EU scene. I don't, you know, naturally haven't made as close of relationships with the EU scene. So when they do join tournament time, it's kind of naturally makes the most sense to like almost unintentionally underrate them and just say like, oh, I don't really know them. I don't know what they're capable of. And then when they surprise you and whenever you see what they're capable of, it's super, super super fun so again any team that i don't know whether you're eu or na or whatever region you're from super super exciting to see and also yeah they have really weird names one of them's name is chicken so if you if, if we were to shuffle chicken, some that's the one you're or, focusing on there's the letter uh, e three I, times i, three I get that <laughs> I, I get that but i i'm just kind of fixated on chicken sandwich at the moment i know they're not mm -hmm. on the same team but like if you were to put those two players in a duo queue that they would be chicken sandwich so just saying um, going into the next team, it is Z-Axis rebranded with a whole bunch of new members as well. They started up, actually, Lance, I'll let you take this one away because those are literally your boys. These are my fellas here in the, the Z-Axis, now going by Red Dojo for now. We also do have a logo for them. Not sure why the PCC logo is up there for them. That'll be around for the group reveal. But these have got some familiar faces on them as well. If you watched the Hunt of Heroes uh, tournament, you were familiar with Wangle and Blue Jay. They're stepping into the solo and jungle role for here. We've got my good buddy Atomic holding it down in the mid lane as well. And then over in the duo lane, we're going to have Akram on support and Natty on ADC. They've also got a pretty solid sub on their roster as Mumu or in Mumus. Uh, I believe Mumus will actually be playing in the group. Uh, stage as Wangle has got an obligation. Somebody is probably hanging out with him, trying to get a piece of those giant juicy lips that he has. <laughs> <laughs> okay, buddy. Um, this is a team that I will tell you, I, I am biased towards. I, I said earlier that I am an immune fanboy. I am a bigger Red Dojo fanboy than I am any other team. I might like them more than the Cleveland Browns at this given moment. Um, I am the community manager for the Discord that they ran or run, and I have been watching these guys very closely. I don't know if I could say uh, without some ignorance that a team is working harder at being good at this game than Red Dojo is right now. They are doing uh, three to four coaching sessions a week. They are scrimming five days a week. These guys are active. One of the cool things about um, about this team as well is a lot of these players came out of the Pred ranked in-house discords. That was a big thing going on last week. As that started to die down, uh, a lot of people move into the Dojo Discord and they had their coaching sessions. Last week, something that I, I really found interesting was they just held the coaching session open. So if you had access to the right channel, they were just 20 people in there listening to the coach talk to the teams as both teams screamed against each other. And we all just got to listen to the coach. And that was a really, really cool experience if no one's ever actually been in a coaching session like that before. Um, everyone was super respectful, super quiet. So if you ever get the chance, and have the unique opportunity to hang out in that Discord during those times, you might be able to learn a lot. Yeah, shout out to Coach Sagittarius, the Uruguayan faker. Yeah, um, I mean, just in general, big shout outs to them for for giving that level of interest and love to the game, right? Like for themselves and for anybody else that they're <clears throat> interacting with, that whole Discord, I, I've definitely kept my eyes on it a little bit as well, the dojo. Um, it seems like there's a lot of work and love and passion going on there, so you love to see it, right? Yeah, they really, they really, really are actually committed to uh, to the game, to the community, and to just generally getting better. Listening to, sitting down with Mumu's all the time, he's the kind of person who is just the human computer. He finds it fun to sit in practice mode, level up the character one by one, and just compare items. Eat every single item and every single build, all these weird wonky builds you see out of the community, a lot of the time I'm seeing them initially come from him. They're his ideas. Bro was running five codexes the other day. I'm still running <laughs> he five codexes. was convinced codex. that five codexes on Gideon was the optimal it's the build. Go. It is the optimal build. You get, get you out of here. 70, yeah, you know, 70 AP for 1400 gold. That's more than combustion fully built. Get out of and here. And all of those codex actually will build into completed items on their own. Get out of here. We're not talking about this right now. We'll get in. He's we'll get into this. Dude. We'll get into this some other time. But Moo, Moo will defend the numbers the second he gets the opportunity to. I'm sure he's spamming in the chat box right We're now. We're not supposed to we, tell the secret tech, and we just we are on also screen. don't want to exclude Agora's exiles are in this as well. A couple of names from this uh, were on the roster that was formerly PTAB. Now going to some other uh, another name, Agora's exile. 
They've got our good friend Bears. I think that is bad news, Bears, right? That is bad news, okay. Bears. He's changed yeah. his name to just, just Bears. Just make it. That's a good, a good little shortening of it. Bears, ranting I like gamer, bad news, Bears, Dubs, Silver, and Papa Beans. Another one of my personal favorite names <laughs> in Papa the game. Beans, Papa Beans. We gotta so, give a shout out to Papa Beans. If I didn't, a few of my friends who are uh, close to him would probably be upset with me. So how's it going, Beans? <laughs> also, fantastic logo. A bunch of like. A stick figures hanging out on a sword with like a cosmic rift behind it i'm all about that so gotta yeah. gotta give some love to the art every single time i see a good logo here so we actually have group c has a very well-rounded bracket i think there's some recognizable players in there there's some new faces and there's some players who have notable skill all i believe all those a lot of the players who are notable and are known are at roughly the same skill level. So I think Group C would be the most entertaining one to watch, in my opinion, just because you can get a lot of even matched games out of it. And that could be quite entertaining on its own, seeing how scrappy people will get. Right. So that'll take us to our final group. Uh, we're going to start it off by talking about Team Fire and Ice. I believe this is a ragtag group of individuals who were just put together. Um, from what I can understand right now, they are off laner. Their solo laner is F6. My boy F6, shout out to you if you're around, buddy. Uh, Flame Pokin is out there in the jungle forum. We've got Winter, Mr. Meds, and the Legends up. They've also got Pappy Plays in there as a sub. I really like the color scheme that they have with like the light blue and the orange. I'm a big fan of orange colors myself. So it'll be interesting to see what these guys can do. Definitely some experienced players. But I think that they're just starting to come together as a group. Yeah, there, there was um, in the PCC Discord over the last little week, we were trying to facilitate and help out teams find that one extra person alongside um, the Looking for Teams channel. So I believe this team is a team that came about as partially as a result of the subs help uh, channel that we that we created. I saw Legends Up posting there a whole bunch. I saw um a few others you know trying to create a team as well and f6 always is a good player he's got a good brain on him he knows how to you know facilitate his team so i think he's going to be a very very uh big asset i've never seen someone communicate as vocally and frequently as f6 ha f6 has on comms he's a he's a vocal boy for sure uh six six likes to make sure other people can hear him talk almost as much as he likes to make sure that he can hear him talk <laughs> But yeah, um, going into Fraud Company. I don't know who any of these people are, but I do, once again, I love their names. We've got Smart Monkey that's going to be playing solo. Bush is going to be in jungle. We got Sue in mid lane. And then Michael EDP uh, on support and Billa on carry. I... in chat right now as well. How's it going, Billa? Tell us a little bit about your team, Billa, because I, I apologize, but I, I don't have my finger on your guys' pulse. I don't know who you guys are. But I love the just S U U U U U U for the mid laners. Just a little bit about the team. The team captain is actually their carry, Billa. Uh, his favorite champion is going to be Murdoch. We have their support's favorite champion being Narbash. Gideon for mid. Chimera in the jungle, which will be interesting because Chimera has kind of fallen out of favor over the past little, uh, the past few days. And then Crunch in the solo lane. So I don't know if that if that was their ideal team comp, Crashy. How do you think that would play out in a game in the current meta? Well, I mean, we have to see how the drafts go down. Uh, but I mean, there's some really strong picks there. Like you said, there's Chimera, who I love. Chimera is my favorite hero. But um, yeah, you don't always get the the golden opportunity to play him. And there's a couple heroes that I can't stand playing Chimera into. So it really just depends on the draft. But um, Narbash is always an interesting one. I mean, I remember kind of like the rise and fall of Narbash with buffs and nerfs. Um, and EU was running it a lot prior to buffs. So I definitely think that there's still potential there. Narbash has a, mm -hmm. it's got a soft spot in my heart because I just like playing with it too. Um, and then Murdoch is just like consistent, right? Like he may not be, I never know if people ever I think, think Murdoch, Murdoch is, is the always best. the most consistent ADC we've yeah, had. Yeah, it, it's, it's funny though, because like, I, I don't know if there's ever been like a conversation, at least that I've heard where anyone ever says like, oh, Murdoch is the best carry, but he's never like the worst either, right? Like he's always consistent. You always know you're going to get value out of playing Murdoch and um, playing around traps is really annoying as i don't know for me as a jungler when i'm trying to like walk into like a fang pit to steal or something and i that's have to like do this awkward chimera. little dance <laughs> yeah true that's yeah. where you take the chimera he's got nothing yeah. outside of that um but yeah so that's just a quick rundown of those teams i, I think 
in the jungle right now we're seeing um some more off meta picks over the last little week we're seeing severog come out and there's a big little there's a nice little debate whether or not severog is a viable jungler i'm in the camp of yes however you kind of have to build in my opinion the most success i've had with him is you have to build ad first item it needs the mutilator oddly enough for the omni vamp the ability haste and the 90 percent scaling on his q so i'm team i'm camp severog for there so we'll, we'll i'd like to see maybe that pop up in one of the groups personally yeah we'll see i think you're we gonna see some chimera you'll see some, oh, we'll you see several oh you said I'm, I'm, I'm team okay. severog lance I saw you play that last night, and I went in and played a game with it with TDM at the end of it. And you know what I found that I was doing when I played Severog Jungle? Missing it. Not ganking. Every stack. No. I, was, <laughs> I, was, I was sitting in the jungle trying to get stacks because it was what I cared about because it felt like it's what I needed to succeed. So I you can, you can I will best. hate I will hate until I see somebody pop off on it. Hebrew Hammer, if you're around, sh play, it, play it in the main event. Show me that Severog Jungle can work, but I do not believe so you I can think start it's... your red you do your fives for the five camp right so you're at eight stacks there right yeah you go over to your blue you do your fours and then you're you blue. leave your twos you leave your two i mean twos are take very very long to do even though they are the xp camp severog wants um quantity over quality as you would describe it so you do your fours then you're blue and at that point you're level three and a half ish severog's gank at level two and three is actually quite strong because he can aoe root from outside of the fog wall it is that large of a distance and then the dash gap closes right onto them they're almost if, if the play goes right whoever you're ganking is basically forced to blink every time my only my only thoughts on sev jungle is that like you have to kind of like let the passive fall to the to the like the like the, it's not your the background not your prio, yeah right? it doesn't like... become it doesn't become your prio and if if there is an opportunity where it makes sense to draft severog and then have it as a flex pick and then you're like you know what i think the lane would be better between these two picks if we threw seven in the jungle i could see it doing like i could see a team doing it uh, i don't think it's inherently like the go-to thing but it's no. not terrible right it's not like we're picking decker and throwing her in the jungle or something like that um so viable enough yeah a go-to strategy not so convinced um His but either way definitely like potential possible. is just so strong you don't oh, yeah. see it in the off like him being in the off lane all the time you don't actually see him be able to flex his muscles all that much but when you put him in the jungle he's a lot more present in those fights the only thing is, is because he's an awkward pick you can take advantage of it you can bully him right out of his jungle if you're the right team but really? going on go ahead yeah, Lance. yeah and say so just going on really quick i don't know that we talked about the rest of group d i think we got a little derailed yeah. by talking about some champions oh Zetion's we're going flame. on the next team we are there <laughs> zession's flame is next yeah zession's flame and rogue definitely have some players that uh we're going to be familiar with uh some some big names within them so we want to make sure that they are getting their shine as well we've got crashy's old buddy defense is playing off lane for zession flame i believe he is the captain and kind of like originator of this organization mm -hmm. you can remember he did win a tournament with our uh special guest today crashy at one point so a little bit of a relationship there uh we've also got oh osh roman in their jungle for them the curry lord is going to be keeping it down in mid lane shout out to curry lord i used to play with him way back in the paragon days but he had forgotten who i was uh zarilla and omega carrying out the rest of that roster as well and then rogue has got some people that uh we should definitely be familiar with here they got tech and kid holding it down in the solo lane nitro is going to be their jungler appy picker formerly of bad timing is going to be their mid laner they got pinzo so this tournament is dunzo on support and haru is going to be carrying for them they also have my good buddy 94j or potentially j pi subbing for them so that's really interesting. For Zession's Flame, um, we did talk about defenses, but people might not know Omega. Omega's an old head from Paragon as well. Very skilled player, very good at fill. Uh, I know him mostly as mid lane and carry, so he's gonna be nice and at home in his role. And I think that team will be able to be a nice contender for Group D, but now we're going into Team Rogue. Tekken Kid and Appy Picker alone are just astronomical players. Like seeing appy picker anywhere you put him in any champion or any role and he's just going to excel he's going to be probably the the vip for the team mid lane i believe is his comfort right now so he'll be able to really really flex that uh that muscle and you know just help the team out tech and kid 
also probably one of the known known as one of the best solo uh laners in the game right now i'm pretty sure you guys have gone against him but he's a force to be reckoned with for sure yeah, big shout outs to the homie Pinzo Dunzo. Always has some uh, unique hot takes, spicy streams. I love the guy. I love him. Uh, he's really, really funny and uh, uh, definitely a character to have in the scene, but really looking forward to their team. Didn't know that Appy Picker was going to be playing with them. So, yeah, that like you said, I think with Tekken and Appy alone, those are just like really, really good players. Mm -hmm. um, again, I do want to do the callback to Zetchin's Flame for defenses. Love defenses, man. We had the opportunity to have him sub for us on TOS for one event, and he, he played amazing. He fit in really, really well. He has good communication, plays a solid off lane. So I uh, just want to show some love back to him because one of the, you know, the homie that I, I won my first Pred event with. So uh, definitely big shout outs to him. Looking forward to seeing how they fare in their group and uh yeah i mean awesome awesome lineup i love haru i know a lot of yeah. rogue you can't I hang forget out haru haru is yeah. such a good dude yeah. honestly i was gonna say i mean i just happen to know a lot of the rogue roster because i hang out in pinzo stream so you know it's where I, I got familiar with a lot of them so yeah we'll see if we'll see if the pinzo dunzo can make the group stage just that dunzo for everybody else and uh have a good time with this one yeah so wrapping up, now that we've seen all the teams, we've seen who's being placed where and what the groups are, which group do you guys want to keep your eye on the most? Like, which one do you think will be the most entertaining? Which one do you think will be the fastest run? Who do you think the real, con aside from royalty, because we know royalty is going to be probably one of the top contenders in the whole tournament who might be able to actually take down professors and immune. But which, like, which groups got you most, got you most hype? A group. Oh, go ahead, say, Crashy. Why don't you say, take it away? Yeah, I think Group C is is really interesting to me. Um, this one, it, it looks like it could be kind of tight. Like, there's a lot of players in here that I feel naturally I either don't have enough information on, or I feel like their skill levels are pretty similar. Um, I think Red Dojo, in my mind, stands out a little bit over this group, uh, but that doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to, like, 3-0 the group, or I don't expect a 3-0 um, throughout the group. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how Group C is going to play out. Um, you know, prime time having, you know, a couple good players that I'm familiar with, and then as well as, like, that additional context that I didn't even know where they're, you know, they're kind of coming together from Smite. Um, you know, Gargamel a team that I know very little of, but they have a player named Chicken, so definitely expect to see a lot coming out from that. <laughs> Red Dojo, like I said, the team that stands out a bit to me in this group uh, from a lot of the hard work that they've been putting in and just the players that they do have. Uh, and then Agora's Exiles, you know, some some players that we've, we've known, you know, seen around the scene. Big shout-outs to B&B there. And um, looking forward to seeing what they can do. So th this group to me is, is very interesting. I think it's mostly because I, I do feel like this group is a little tighter in skill, like, to each other, mm -hmm. uh, but also because I am looking forward to seeing Red Dojo work. So sorry for being a little bit biased there. I do think that they're going to stand out a little bit more in this group, um, but excited to see how this one you know comes I, together. I do just have a little bit more information really quick about Agora's Exile because Ranting Gamer sent me a message on Discord. Nice. So that is Greystone's sword with the prime buff orb behind it. And then each of those little figures that are in it have a different color to represent the different members of the team. So, that's adorable that's adorable so that's shout out to ranting cute. gamer for Good the job, inside guys. scoop on what's going on or or I'm actually not being patronized that is actually is pretty it, cool or is it agorable <laughs> oh ouch get out <laughs> yeah we're, we're replacing you with an actual potato that's it spuds <laughs> spuds is a special guest next time guys. i I do have my eyes on Group A a lot, though. I think that that, because of the best of one format, I think that this is a coin flip. Um, like I said, we don't know a whole lot about 117, but they, you know, it's a best of one. They have a chance at beating anybody. Bronze Army's got some pretty decent players on it. Vanguard's been putting a lot of time in together, and then Sporadic's got some of my favorite players on it as well. I'm a big Just Row TV fan. Sub to him if, you do, if you're not already. He's incredibly entertaining as an individual but also a real real cracked adc so it's going to be interesting to see where this goes and i think that the biggest part of this as and i don't want to continue to repeat myself but i think it's very important the best of one and the fact that anybody can beat anybody in one game makes this group specifically very interesting i mean good as a good example like what could happen is i i went against seismic this week in my game and he steamrolled as seismic does he steamrolled my dual lane he walked out of that lane 15 and 0. now it's a four fun game in solo queue right but somehow our team managed to come back and that is the exact event that you're talking about you can have the best players but that one throw in the late game is what could seed the upset and put the underdog on top right lance 
That's exactly what I think. So that that's exactly what's going on. And like you said, there are group A's and now they're gonna be is probably likely to be another equal bracket. Just is someone I met through the Pred Rank Discord, and I saw him improve massively in that week alone that uh that the discord was quite popular and the first few days you know just row who is this guy watching him play okay he can land a few things i had him on my team okay me and just row are working together i have no idea how to play support but i'm actually somehow facilitating <laughs> him and he's doing well and now i see him in my solo queue games and i'm just like oh it's just row oh i probably should watch out because he might actually hit me in the face one too many times and i might regret it um adamental another friend of mine on there from an old head from paragon big in the community likes just you know going out there having fun pretty decently skilled player and i think he'll be able to actually put a good <clears throat> a good fight up against some of the members of bronze army some of the members of 117 and you know like vanguard we know we have delmo on there delmo's quite a recognizable face in the community as well so that is going to be another pretty well-rounded group in my what opinion. one of the reasons that i think vanguard might have the slight edge in this group is just because of the fact that you know you blow one draft you get out drafted one time you get a bad team comp into another team it doesn't matter what your individual players are if you've got a team comp that just doesn't work cohesively because the people get around you and they pick better things than you you can blow one game very very easily yeah in that format if you just don't know how to draft so vanguard has got a dedicated coach to them coach leo's in there all of the time telling them about the meta telling them who they should play they do a lot of scrims they're always practicing that sort of stuff so i think that might give them a slight edge in this in this environment so yeah i believe that's going to be it for today guys if there's any last closing remarks you say you'd like to say before we end the stream i'll let crashy and lance take it away sure i'll i'll go on ahead and uh do plug himself uh, no no, <laughs> no, no, no. I, I wanna YouTube. <laughs> i wanna i wanna do the kind right thing and way. say uh big shout outs to all of you at pcc i think um y'all have been consistently putting in hard work you're consistently like pushing the bar and pushing the status quo and the standard of competitive predecessor and as a person that's competed in you know past tournaments and someone that's now going to be enjoying it um you know as someone as a special guest someone as a viewer um it, it doesn't go unnoticed right and i'm speaking mm -hmm. to joelster i'm speaking to everybody right like y'all put a lot of hard work in it looks good it feels good it's really early on and and i'm sure that the community appreciates it because it just gives the whole feeling of community and liveliness and it makes the whole game really really nice right so yeah. um i always think that this kind of a plug to like remind y'all that the work that y'all are doing is really really important and it's valued and not only is it important and valued but y'all are y'all are really putting like a high level of quality to it and as a content creator myself like i look at this and i'm impressed so big shout outs to you guys all of y'all that are working hard um it's awesome to see man it's really really impressive we really really do appreciate that because our one of our tenement tenants is community comes first we are here to provide a good product to help the community grow to facilitate the community and give the community content that it deserves and put the best thing out that we can everyone that we work with is like-minded everyone we work with just wants to do well and we're making sure that the people we do interact with are people who have that same passion the same mindset the same drive just the predecessor community is small but it's extremely passionate there's a big bowl of Kool-Aid that is permanently being refilled by everyone in this community and constantly being drank. And we want to make sure that everyone has, you know, blue raspberry, red cherry, whatever you want. It's all there. Yeah. But yeah, so that, thank you for mentioning that to, uh, to us, Crashy, because, you know, that is really appreciated. A lot of the people on our team, Choice plays, Lance even, he's constant. like, Choice is always trying to find a new way to do things. Um, Lance is always reaching out to the team, to the teams and like being com like committed to interacting with the community. Um, just everyone we've interacted with is doing what they can to make sure the community gets the best that they deserve um so we appreciate that and make sure everyone actually does check out crashy on his <laughs> youtube i believe he's been a little a little quieter as of late however crashy should start picking up again you're you're a you're a staple of the community my dude so yeah. uh get out there making videos and eventually i'll find myself on a team we'll see we'll see what the future holds yeah yeah and uh don't forget lance lance is here too he's right there yeah I want to make sure that everybody knows i've seen a couple of comments in this in the section about like oh when does the draft start today when's a group what's a group play whatever this is that is something we are setting up for that is next saturday on uh the 15th it's going to start at 11 a.m eastern time 
We'll probably start broadcasting about an hour to an hour and a half later after these round robins that we went through today are finished. Just a recap of how it's going to work. The first place of all of these groups that we went through today, A is going to play the winner of D. B is going to play the winner of C. Uh, the winner of those games will go for third and fourth. Uh, the losers will play for fifth and sixth seed in our tournament. And then the real exciting one is the teams that get second within our group. The guys who get second in A will play the guys who get second in D. Uh, the guys who get second in B will play the guys who get second in C. The winners of those make the tournament. The losers of those are the first two eliminated. So then the winner of that will play for seventh and eighth. It's going to be on the 15th. And then our main event where you can see our former champion and former runner-up professors and team immune are on the 29th. I once again, even though we have already thanked Crashy several times, want to thank Crashy again for joining <laughs> us. He got in here with about five to ten minutes to spare. He was taking a little cat nap. Uh, oh, make yeah. sure you're on top of following him on in, or on uh, YouTube. Make sure you follow him on Twitter. Uh, that secret foot that was leaked on Fang Booth's uh, thing the other day, where everyone's like, "Oh, okay, Han is a foot fan." That was Crashy's leg, actually. <laughs> Uh, so Ooh. if you would have been following crashy on twitter you would have already known that though is, is so, crashy gonna be the the new thigh model dude uh it was a whole leg wait I, we have wait, his hand did y'all really, wait, wait, did y'all really use my model, that, that leg picture that i posted on twitter she, uh she like got caught with her <laughs> desktop displayed within it and she just had twitter up and it was that picture that you had posted of your leg yeah it was funny yeah. okay let me there's get a couple, there's wait, a couple wait, pretty funny me, clips me, of it let's not do any context let's not do any context dude, the context, we actually make that the in the context in without now? it is so weird <laughs> it was one of those that was like tweet a random picture from your phone and don't huh? you know it was like one of those so i i literally just had a picture of my leg on my phone i don't remember why <laughs> We should uh, we should turn that into one of the discs, one of the emotes <laughs> in the channel when we get emote access, nice, dude. Hell yeah! Um, but yeah, that's gonna be it for everyone. Uh, I am Geronimo <laughs> Deck. If you guys haven't followed just yet, make sure you do follow, like, and subscribe. Just you know, punch that like button, hit that follow button, uh, keep in touch because we actually are just streaming outside of our normal events you might be able to catch someone on there that you don't uh don't recognize or you might have to learn something or you'll probably just watch me be bad at video games um but yeah i'm geronimo jack beside me is lance to my left and on my right is our special guest crashy who i'm sure we can probably convince to uh maybe come on on another cast once or twice and he's got a charizard with him so hey uh, that's going to be it for today, guys. Thank you for everyone who tuned in. I'm John Armajack. We're signing out, and welcome to the PCC. <laughs>